perspective where we take another look at life and hopefully by doing that give you some insights into where you are at the moment in your life and where you want to go. So we've been discussing different questions for introspection and I've encouraged you to journal or talk to someone about them, discuss them with someone. Please do so because these questions are very potent. Some of them are very simple. Some of them are very like almost like jarring when you read them the first time. But the real, real value of these questions are in the answers, in the answers you give. That's where the value is. So if you just think about the question for a while and then move on to the next one, you'll miss out on that. So write your answers down. And discuss them with someone or at least do one of those right or discuss them with someone okay so today we are it's it's day it's video five in the series of ten where we have 50 questions that we can reflect on and um, I'm gonna pick up where we left off last time because our first question will link to that so we ended up we ended off with this question. What credible evidence do you have to suggest that your fears or limiting beliefs that are holding you back are true? Right? So I was also looking for a, a, a word there in terms of how I, um, what I call limiting beliefs as well. And it's kind of supporting beliefs. You know, beliefs we create to support the way we already behave. Why we don't have certain things. We have these, these beliefs that we create to support that behavior. It's just another form of limiting belief. So in regards to those fears and limiting beliefs, looking for evidence that's, uh, are they true or is it just in my mind? We go on to day five and we ask the, this question. Okay, if there is evidence, maybe you find evidence. Yeah, I have failed. Um, so my fear of failing in this regard is valid. Or I have been criticized. Or my family does have a problem with this specific thing uh, in my life. Or this career I'm pursuing or whatever it might be. You know, if there is evidence that your fears or limiting beliefs might come to pass... Is the risk significant enough to prevent you from going after your passion? So going after that thing that you really want, whether it be a career thing, a relationship thing, a health thing, a personal development thing in terms of your health. Um, is it significant enough for you to not go after that? Uh, and really of reflecting on that question um, can become very interesting very quickly. Because if you feel like, yes, it is significant enough, maybe the way you've clarified that passion or that goal, a career, relationship, or a health goal, where you want to move towards, what you really want, isn't clear enough. You haven't painted that picture in a way that inspires you. Inspires you enough, because that means you... you you don't have enough motivation and inspiration to overcome these fears because you feel like, no, it's, it's too big. It's too big a risk that these things might happen again or actually happen for the first time if it's, you know, if it's uh, uh, legit. Okay, question number 22. Can you tolerate some risk and uncertainty in relation to finding your pa passion? And if so, how much? All right. So... If you reflect on this question, it's really about understanding, okay, what am I really capable of? How much am I willing to suffer to get this thing, to pursue my passion, um, to have more, of, uh, more time and energy to invest in this specific thing that I want? So I use the word passion often here. Um, because there are many things that we, we, we find enjoyable and we find, you know, makes us feel alive or come alive. Uh, whether it be uh, in relationships, in our career, or just looking after ourselves, our health. Um, whether it be in the beauty arena, the fitness arena, you know, diet, and food, whatever that might be for you. How much risk can you tolerate? Um, and maybe you create a scale for yourself. One being the bottom you know not a lot 
uh, ach, um, yeah, not a lot, and 10 being a lot. And engraving that, determining what do I mean by that. Another way to engage with this question. How much are you willing to tolerate? 23, what do you prioritize over pursuing your main passion in life? This is, this is very revealing when you start doing this. Your income, your job, your lifestyle, your home, the opinion of others. What are you prioritizing above that? Over you pursuing your passion or going after you want, after what you want in life. Um, <clears throat> sometimes it can be leisure, and sometimes it can be escaping. So it's a form of procrastination. So we can even if we're very busy with our job and it's a it's a great job, it's a meaningful job. It, generates a lot of income that can be a way to procrastinate you know working overtime putting extra time in there because we are avoiding this painful reality that we're actually not living in line with who we are our passion and what we truly want in life it can be things like that write down your answers look at those answers and feel free of course to chop and change the questions or ask different questions that come to mind for you that you feel might help you engage with this content a bit better so what is the main concern that's holding you back from committing to pursuing your primary passion in your life committing committing to pursuing that thing so one way to to notice that you are not really committing is noticing the kind of words and sentences you use when you describe this passion or thing you want to go after. Um, if you use words like, you know, I really must um, get around to doing that, that's not commitment. I really want to, that's not commitment. But if you just start changing those sentence structures so um, for example choosing a time and date and, and and starting i'm starting on that day not i must or i want to uh, i'm starting not i uh, will do it someday i'm starting on that date or uh, even scheduling it you know saying uh, and making that commitment out loud four o'clock every Tuesday and Thursday I spend time on my creativity and um, if maybe you draw it'll be that whatever that might be so what is the main concern that's holding you back from committing to pursuing your primary passion in life committing right commit to doing it not I want to say more about this thing th these words must uh, and I want to you know I really must get around to um, drawing more, taking more photos, if that's um, part of your passion. I really must uh, further my education so I can up my career in the way that I want. I really must start eating better or exercising. That's not a commitment, all right? So what's the concerns holding you back? What are you concerned about uh, when you think about the commitment? You think like uh, well, failure might be another thing again here, yeah? those limiting beliefs. Are you concerned about where will I find the time? You know, how will I do that? Or are you concerned about um, my, my partner won't allow it, my, my kids need me that time? Um, that might be a way that stops you from committing. So you say, you keep on saying, I must, I must. But if you say, I'm structuring my week so I get time to exercise. I'm structuring my week so I get time to draw. Um, and you have a discussion with your partner if it's about kids or whatever. That's commitment. That's a different level. I hope I've made that clear. This just think about the word committing. So what concerns you have that stops you from committing and, and keeps you uh, in that loop of using must and will and whatever the words are you use and I use as well. 25, what specific actions can you take to reduce and manage this fear? So I've already touched on this a bit, but think about, okay, if I'm afraid that um, I'll neglect my children or I won't get um, 
enough work done? Who can I talk to? Who can I tell about my commitment? You know, if you talk about uh, your children, maybe you talk to your partner. How can we maybe work on a schedule where I get an hour a week even to spend time doing this, pursuing this specific passion of mine? Um, how can we involve the kids in that? Uh, my wife's an artist and with, uh, with the COVID lockdown time, she just started doing art projects with them, which, which was amazing to see how she could uh, every single day come up with something new and creative to do with them. And some of them were quite simple, but others were like amazing, like making molds of their hands and things like that and involving them in the whole process. And that was a great way. She could have said, yeah, I must get back to the art once the lockdown is over. But she was, she just said, um, I structure time, I involve them. That's the commitment. I, uh, I'm going to do the, this project and this project with them. That's commitment. Um, and, and it's been, it's had a massive effect and impact on her and of course on our children and how they view creativity and how often they want to be creative. You know, they talk about we, when are we going to make art again. So that's quite cool. So what specific actions can you take? If it's work and you, you, you have a colleague that you can talk to, you know, I need some accountability because I'm afraid to apply for a different job. I'm afraid to upgrade my skills. Um, I keep on saying that I must, but I don't. I don't enter that exam or, um, or that course. I don't take that course. Um, will you take it with me? Um, make financial commitments. If I pay for you, will you take it with me? Or, or whatever it might be. What actions, specific, be very specific, can you take to help you re reduce or manage that fear that's stopping you from making those commitments? All right, so it's about being practical and just kind of... Uh, uh, holding up a mirror, paper mirror if you are writing down, or a human mirror when you are talking to someone to bounce these ideas off and finding a way to commit. Okay, folks, I hope that's been helpful and um, I hope that you followed this whole series. If you haven't, of course, go ahead and watch the other videos as well. If you want to engage with these questions deeper and need more help and input, and you're really curious about where they might lead, please go ahead and book a free consultation call with me, 45 minutes, absolutely free, to discuss what you need, what I can provide, and if they match. And if they don't match, how can I help you find someone that will actually address your specific needs and wants in that area? All right, that's all from me uh, for now. Uh, next time we tackle, uh, what we are we now? Tackle questions 26 to 30. I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.